Welcome back to this special TEC TV production on Operation Deep Freeze. When the operation began in 1955, the Navy provided all logistical support on the continent. But since the late 90s, that operation has switched to the Air Force. Now we go back to Antarctica and show you how the Air National Guard provides the critical support those scientists need. When the Navy started transferring the mission to us, the perfect choice was the 109th out of New York. On the ice in Antarctica, the 109th Airlift Wing of the New York Air National Guard handles all the heavy airlift. And there's really only one reason why. They have the planes to do it. The 109th is the only unit in the world that has the ski-equipped LC-130. It's uh, the only uh, medium lift aircraft in the world that can go ahead and land on skis. And basically that gives us the capability of landing anywhere on uh, any uh, snow-covered uh, uh, terrain. Pretty much one of the few planes that can hold the amount of cargo that we have. The places that the plane can go and the, uh, the independent field camps that it can land on with the skis in place um, makes it a very unique aircraft. It's not too big, it's not too small, but it's definitely a workhorse and it gets the job done and it's very reliable. I mean, there's things that break and everything, we all expect that, but it's a very reliable aircraft and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's been around for years and hopefully it stays for years to come. Year after year, the 109th brings their LC-130s to Antarctica and they stay for four months. From October to February, they fly 24 hours a day, six days a week, delivering passengers, cargo, and fuel to scientists spread throughout the continent. They're going to do 400 uh, missions on the continent of Antarctica in, in a four-month period. We can go out into an area where no one has ever been before, ever, and land a C-130, an LC-130 on open snow and put in a camp and for a research station where no one has ever been, no human has ever been before. Those aircraft are what give us the edge over other nations in being able to uh, have a continent-wide presence. That allows us to go virtually anywhere. Before I could go anywhere, I first had to stop by this office, which serves as the nerve center for the operation. Here, pilots on a rotation determine where and when their comrades will fly and how much cargo they will take with them. Um, basically, we make sure that uh, the uh, aircraft are getting where they're supposed to go. Uh, we schedule the missions, the crews, as well as uh, working with the civilian side of it, the NSF. Um, you know, they schedule the uh, type of cargo and their own passengers out to the different camps and we work with them and make sure that they get what they're supposed to get. Thankfully, Captain Nicholson set me up with a flight to the place they fly to most, the South Pole. Of the 400 flights the 109th does each season, 260 of them are to the geographic South Pole and the new elevated Mudson Scott South Pole Station that was dedicated in 2008. Up to 250 people live and work here in the summer months, and everything they live and work on was brought in by an LC-130. Everything there, the cranes, um, the manufacturers, uh, manufacturer of a company, they want to bring something to the South Pole. They contact us, uh, the 109th, you know, at the base, and they uh, basically talk to the loadmaster section and see uh, how they have to break it down. So they'll manu manufacture something just to fit in the back of this so that it can go out to that, those camps. During every flight to the South Pole, the LC-130 lands right outside the building on a runway that sits on an ice sheet two miles thick. They then begin unloading and reloading all that cargo. While they wait, the pilots ensure the aircraft survives and temperatures reaching negative 50 degrees. Once we uh, offload the cargo we have on the airplane and unload it, any kind of retro that we have to bring back to McMurdo. Other than that, it's just keep an eye on the engines, uh, keep an eye on the systems until uh, we're ready to go. We keep the run engines running and the whole time you're there unless there's some kind of a problem. And uh, basically we're just uh, waiting until uh, everybody's back on the airplane to, to leave. Flying back and forth across the bottom of the world takes its toll on these aircraft. That means the aircraft maintainers have to work overtime to keep the planes flying. And on a continent like Antarctica, they don't have a lot to work with. We don't have hangars down here. We don't, uh, we don't have a, uh, a supply point uh, here. So uh, it's pretty much a bare bones base. When we go ahead and show up, 
and uh, we bring our own risk down with us, our own parts. They bring everything they can and set it up along the edge of the ice runway in order to offer as much service to the aircraft as possible. We have uh, engine shop, we have hydraulics, um, we have electric shop, avionics, sheet metal, and uh, of course the uh, APG, the crew chiefs, which are the, the hardest working ones down here. They're continually on the line doing everything from servicing the plane to minor repairs or just coordinating with the specialists to go out and uh, help them fix the jobs. The maintenance operations here are coordinated in their tower. When aircraft arrive back at McMurdo, the pilots radio into the tower and tell them what the aircraft needs fixed. Then the tower coordinates with the crew chiefs and specialists repair the aircraft as they come in. The maintenance is primarily done on the line. Um, the guys, they, they stage from the shops. They keep their uh, tools and test equipment in one main um, repository. And then basically we have a couple of vans that we travel back and forth to the flight line with to do any kind of maintenance we need. And we do engine changes, everything right out here on the line. If we have a part or a plane that's uh, it's broken beyond our capabilities, and we do have some restrictions, um, fuel, in-tank in fuel maintenance is one, or um, extensive sheet metal work, we'll, uh, we'll get that a one-time flight up to New Zealand. Back in Christchurch, New Zealand is the hub of Operation Deep Freeze and the forward operating point to support all mechanical needs in Antarctica. When the aircraft needs major maintenance, Maintainers take care of it here. We, uh, we refuel, we do all servicing, we do all inspections, any kind of uh, time change tech orders. Pretty much up here, you don't know what you're going to get. It could be a good day one day and anything of changing brakes, struts, tires, things that they can't do on the ice. Nearly 20 maintainers are here in Christchurch, including Tech Sergeant John Flanagan. As a prop shop mechanic, his job is to quickly service the aircraft so it can get back down on the ice. So they have a broke engine down the ice, so we got to hurry up and get this one ready just in case. Well, why can't they, uh, you know, fix it down there? Oh, too cold. They don't have the tools or whatever, but I mean, no. It's too much down there. You know, it's just bad enough to change the engine or change the prop, you know. Sergeant Flanagan has been working on this aircraft for 14 years, so he's an expert on his craft and can fix the problems fairly quickly. The same can be said for many of his teammates in the 109th Airlift Wing, both maintainers and aircrew in New Zealand and on the ice. Several of these people will, be, will do nothing but this for their whole military career because they're guardsmen. They'll, uh, they'll start with the 109th Airlift Wing on Schenectady and can do 20 or 30 years in uniform. And they're very, very skilled at what they do. They know the airplanes inside and out, they know the mission inside and out, and they're very safety-minded. That kind of continuity is something that uh, our uh, Air National Guard is uniquely suited for. Uh, and those folks, uh, they, the, the professional way in which they conduct that mission, um, it, is, it is inspiring. Coming up, we'll take a look at how the Air National Guard deals with the biggest challenge in Antarctica, the weather. Thank you.